that you hear in the background is that of a human heart. It starts beating when you are four weeks old in your mother's womb. It beats for over 2.5 billion times in your lifetime. The energy that it produces can move a truck 20 miles in a single day. In a lifetime, you could go all the way from here to the moon and back. That's how wonderful this organ heart is. If you were to take your fist up in the, uh, in the air, this is approximately the size of your heart. I'm, I'm very glad today is not a Monday because you're more likely to get a heart attack on a Monday. The reason is the stress hormone cortisol is in high quantities on Monday because of the boss calling up or all the traffic and you just don't want to do it after a Sunday, right? And if you had a good laughter, like all of us do very often, the chances of increasing your blood flow to the heart increases by 20%. That's a very good reason to laugh on all days and especially on Mondays. So the reason I picked up this topic of the heart, you can, uh, yeah. So the reason I brought this topic, the reason I was talking about the heart is to connect to healthcare it, in a way that we could all connect to, right? So when I joined Healthcare UX, I have worked previously in manufacturing, procurement, uh, I have worked in health sciences, various domains, and I was trying to find that one thing that I could actually connect to. I went through numerous TED Talks, I bought books in Healthcare UX, I went through numerous articles, went through the different products in the market, trying to understand what is my connection to healthcare. A lot of time, what is within uh, can help you understand what's outside. And I got that connection in October 2012. I was diagnosed with this uh, condition called dengue. It's caused by a mosquito bite. When uh, it happens because your platelet counts go below 150,000, 150,000 uh, mark. So my platelet counts had reduced to around 65,000. And doctors had asked me to get admitted. And little about platelets and about dengue, uh, what happens is the normal thing is between 1,50,000 and 4,50,000. It reduces and you do not have a clue. You just get some symptoms like fever, uh, nausea, vomiting, some of these symptoms. But what doesn't happen is it doesn't continue for a period of time. It goes up, it comes down, and it's a complete silent killer. You would be perfectly fine standing right here and you would just collapse because your platelet count has gone below 3,000 or it has gone to like, you know, alarming levels. And you can die. So back to my story, I was in the hospital bed. My platelet counts had gone to 20,000 and doctors advised me to get a platelet transfusion done. Now what happens in platelet transfusion is the blood, the donor provides blood and the platelets are extracted from the blood and they're given to the person who is having low platelet count. So the hospital uh, uh, did not have the facility for this platelet extraction, which meant that one of my friend who came to donate his blood had to go all the way to Indranagar on his bike, donate his blood, get it extracted, take it in a pouch, and on his erection, come back to the hospital and give it to me. Now, the platelets look very nice. Uh, they are like this crystal ball, small, small ball, and they shine a lot. And uh, I think I might have been hallucinating. I'm not sure if it actually looks like that because I was in a very delirious state at that moment. And I was lying in that bed, uh, in, the, in the hospital bed, and as they were transferring uh, the platelets into my bloodstream, suddenly my body turned pink. I had a lot of swelling everywhere, and I didn't like what was happening to me at that moment. The platelet count was going down on a very, very quick level. There was no way to examine how, what the numbers were, but it was definitely going down. My nausea was increasing. My appetite had totally gone down, and over this, this entire thing happening. And at that time, I looked around and I saw into, uh, looked into the eyes of my wife. She was very scared. It brought a question to me, is this it, right? And then I looked at my doctors who are also trying to figure out what's happening. I looked at the nurses and everybody who was around the 
bed trying to figure out what's really happening. I think at that time, I was very vulnerable. And I share that sentiment with thousands and millions of patients everywhere. And that was my connect to healthcare. It was that connect that how do you give that life back to the people? How do you get your life back to the patients? And what happened uh, next was that Avil was injected in my bloodstream. My, uh, within two minutes, I was perfectly normal. I was discharged the very next day. My platelet count had started increasing. I was perfectly normal. Everything was good post that. So that brings me to a question, what, what is really healthcare? Some studies tell me that the suicide rate among doctors is really very high. Uh, it came to me as a surprise. I never thought doctors would do suicide. The time they spend on medical softwares and talking to IT support executives and to talking to insurance agencies and various other aspects managing their practices pales in comparison to the amount of time they actually spend with patients. So this is a healthcare problem. And the amount of money they spend in healthcare around the world and the outcomes that we get are actually quite dismal and it is increasing over the time. The softwares, the lovely uh, stuff that we do, the typography and everything, uh, design patterns and all of the development team is not helping reduce, increase the time for the doctors with the patients. So empathy is very important for healthcare and it's little more from a user experience design designer perspective. One thing comes to my mind is, as designers, if you ask a question, do we get intimidated when somebody takes medical terms, terminology in front of us? Do we get intimidated when somebody talks about drugs? Uh, do we get intimidated about medical procedures? I'll take it a little far away from there. Do you get intimidated when developers talk to you about their frameworks? Do you get intimidated when product managers, product owners talk to you about their strategies? Are you able to have a conversation with these guys? Are you able to communicate and understand like how to get this done rather than just doing this wireframes, doing those lovely screens and just handing it over? Are you able to really collaborate? Are you able to go much beyond that? So the holy T-shape that we often quote and call needs to extend a lot more and it needs to be really thought more. It is beyond into product management. It is a lot into development. You shouldn't get scared when somebody says Node.js or no SQL. I'm not asking you to start developing or start doing what a product manager does. They are there for that job. But our understanding of how all of this operates helps us be more effective. The other thing uh, that comes to my mind is tenacity. It's the ability to test and learn. We cannot spend two years building a software and just finding out that somebody has a better solution in two years. We also don't have time uh, spending so much money in two years and then figuring out it's not working or it's uh, like you know, way too late. What instead we need to do is to release software on a very regular basis. Every week, every month, every quarter, we need to make an impact and learn from that impact and keep reiterating. So that's tenacity. And today, if I am able to finish the conversation in time, maybe there'll be time for some questions from you guys. And maybe I will not have the right answers, and I'm, maybe I will not even be able to give you answers in some cases. So it's very important for all of us to be teachers and learners, to be very humble and work together to find those answers. We shouldn't have that attitude that here is my box and this is my knowledge. I'm very good at typography, I'm very good at Interaction design, I'm very good at research, and this is where it ends. No. Right? We have to learn on a continuous process, on a, as a continuous process and grow. So that was all the gyan. Now I will go into a little story about a clown doctor. This happened in che Czechoslovakia. I uh, do not know the exact time when it happened. Uh, two more minutes. OK, I'll finish it really soon. It's a very interesting story that uh, I really connect with. And she was in a last stage. She could only hear. So the doctor tried to make her smile. And what, what he did was he pretended there was a bird in the room. And he pretended that he caught the bird and 
like you know the patient and the doctor started talking and he pretended he caught the bird and threw, uh, took it out of the room and the bird returned back and finally the doctor and the patient <coughs> agreed that they would leave the bird under the patient's uh, bed. Now she was in the last stage of cancer, she was, she, all her organs had uh, collapsed and she could only hear, I mean her eyesight had also gone. The patient started laughing, smiling and the doctor went. About four months afterwards when he came back, he heard that the patient had a, what we call as spontaneous remission. She was completely healed, all her organs had come on board and she was totally out of cancer, totally healed. So there's a lot more to learn about healthcare and what it does. I want to finish this with just one quote, which is, sound of healing is not the click of a button or a mouse click, it is about the voice of a doctor. Let's give it back to healthcare, thank you.